I just think it's important to remember that your faith is, it's a journey and it's an evolution. Yeah. Right. So I don't think, I think people sometimes get really down on themselves if they feel like their faith is going up and down. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, dude, that's, that's just life. Just like it'll, it'll level out. It'll rise again. Why'd you go atheist? It's a lot easier to believe that there is not a God rather than to believe he hates you. I was struck by lightning. Life in existence is this incredible mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to show people that like, the gospel is cool mm -hmm. and that like, God is cool. That's the point of life is the I don't know, but I believe. When did you get all tatted up? Uh, I got tatted up over the summer. Oh, really? Uh, over like the course of the last year. My what last is, what does that say? This one, um, it says the good news. Uh huh. So it's like a little newsy kid, or like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like a kid that's like a missionary almost. Yeah, yeah. He's delivering the good news, or like the gospel. Uh huh. And so, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Yeah, that's dope. I, I've been like slowly accumulating these over the last year. I've been one. I've been coming up with tattoos ideas for since like middle school oh cool yeah nice i've always always wanted to do them and then i finally got the chance to do it and i was like i'm i'm taking this chance and i'm yeah. gonna fully just go right into it except now that i'm kind of like now I, i'm in this phase right now where i'm trying to like figure out what i want to do with like the church yeah. and like where i sit exactly with the church mm -hmm. and um I don't really know how I feel about like, getting more. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but in a way, they kind of serve a purpose now where it's like Jesus Christ, how he has like his scars, you know? Sure. They show like his past and like what he's been through. Yeah, yeah. And to me, it's kind of what it shows in a way. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm done yet or not. It's, <laughs> it's a hard decision to make. I think, um, I think you just got to, I think whether you are going to, whatever your next step is, I think you just, do it really thoughtfully and prayerfully. Yeah. And don't just say like, wake up, be like, yo, I need a tat today. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah. But what do I know? No, I think that's honestly true. Yeah. And it's what I've been trying to do. Yeah. I've been trying to be very prayerful about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, over the last year, um, I, I did lots of different partying and then I explored in a lot of different ways all over the place. Yeah. And so now that I'm kind of like, coming back, mm -hmm. I'm like trying to give like the church almost like a second chance in a way, mm -hmm. like with my new perspectives and my new ways of thinking. Yeah. Cause I feel like I kind of stepped away and I like had lots of doubts and I like really, really explored those doubts in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. And I feel like I wasn't giving like the church a fair shot anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I had to kind of take a step back, look at the church for everything that it is with my new perspectives and new beliefs. I got back to the temple. Like I, like, two months ago, basically. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to like really use that opportunity to like explore more deeper into the church with like a worthiness background too, mm -hmm. because I feel like a lot of the times people will explore the church or say that they're exploring the church, but like they're not doing like their intentions behind things aren't great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, I'm trying to like do my best to like make sure that my intentions are straight I'm mm -hmm. like worthy. I'm yeah. clean from like everything. Right. And then I can receive answers as I like continue. Right. Right. You can approach it more clear headed and right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. dude. Yeah. So that, that's, that's, that's my goal with where I'm headed. I guess, <laughs> yeah, <but>. yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, I mean, I just think it's important to remember that your faith is, it's a journey and it's an evolution. Yeah. Right. So, I don't th I think people sometimes get really down on themselves if they feel like their faith is going up and down. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, dude, that's, that's just life. Just like it'll, it'll level out. It'll rise again. Um, yeah. I don't think you need to worry about it too much. Yeah. 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 I, I have lots of different ideas towards, um, I mean, everyone has their questions, right? And so, the way I tried to approach them, I tried to be very, very cautious and careful. It was something that like my mission president really instilled in me. Mm -hmm. He he really made sure that you didn't go into it with like so much thinking thinking of it as a doubt mm -hmm. and more so as like a question. Yeah, yeah. 
Because when it's like a doubt versus a question, it's like, have you read Seven Habits of Effective uh-huh. People, yeah, Stephen yeah. Covey? Mm-hmm. And he talks about being understood or seeking to understand before you seek to be understood. Yeah. And I think it's kind of the sim- it's a similar principle, whereas like when I'm diving into the scriptures, I'm not looking for proof to mm-hmm. what I think is wrong or to what I my, whatever my question is. Like I'm looking to like, I'm like looking and being, being willing to like be wrong. Right, right. Because if I am wrong, then like, that's something I need to accept yeah. and I need to be like humble about yeah. it and like mm-hmm. strip away my pride and be able to just like step into that. Yeah. And so it's, I don't know, it's, it's a kind of a tricky area a lot of times mm-hmm. and a lot of people have their own ways of thinking towards it. So it's difficult and people will think differently about it and yeah. family will see it very differently. Sure. And so it's very, I don't know. It's interesting. It's fun. Yeah. It's yeah. very fun. I mean, so you're 37. 36, yeah. 36, yeah. sorry. Cut that out. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, I mean, you've had lots of, I mean, I don't want to say like life experience, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you've seen probably a lot more than what I've seen. Yeah, what yeah. generation are you part of? Um, I'm still a millennial. Millennial, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So m- I know the millennials um, kind of saw like a different view on like the whole technology like phase of uh-huh. like yeah. that's happened over the last 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I grew up in it. Right. It's all I know. Yeah, yeah. It was like five years at the beginning of my life where it like didn't really exist, <laughs> right, right. but I'd barely remember that. Yeah. You didn't have an iPad as a baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But like you guys like saw like everything. Mm-hmm. And so like growing up and seeing like that shift in the world kind of just like slowly take place and happen. Mm-hmm. What was like your views and, and like towards the world and like, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind as everything was happening and how were you like trying to be like cautious of everything, but also like looking at like our generation or like younger generations, Mm -hmm. like what, what impact do you feel like it made and has made on our generation? Mm, That's a good question. So it's funny, like growing up, like technology, as far as like social media and stuff just was non-existent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I didn't even touch social media until like my senior year of high school. Oh, right. Right. And, but then it was like, it was like MySpace. You ever heard of MySpace? Like, yeah, I've heard of it, <laughs> but I don't really know much yeah. about it. It was just, it was like the, the precursor to Facebook. Oh, really? um, but it was like, it was dope. Cause you could like customize your page. Oh, really? And like, it was a lot of, a lot of music. So if you went to someone's page, like you could pick the song that came on when they came there. Really? Like it was just, it was cool, but <laughs> w- whatever. And then, and then I get back from my mission and Facebook has kind of taken over. Yeah. Um, but still Instagram wasn't really around till no. I think 2012 or 14 or something. Yeah, probably. And so, um, the interesting thing is growing up, like it, like it really just wasn't a thing. Yeah. You know? Um, there was little, you know, advances in technology, of course, with computers and music and video and everything, but right. it was fairly gradual. Right. But then, yeah, I want to say maybe kind of the 2010s, 2015-ish, things started to really, you know, go crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I've noticed with younger generations is they're so dialed into what's current Okay. You know, because of TikTok and Instagram. And whereas us growing up, like, you kind of just know what's going on because of the people in your high school. Right. You know what I mean? Like, as far as, like, trends. You mean worldwide versus, like... Yeah, I mean, worldwide, you hear about news and stuff. Right. But I mean, like, fashion, Uh trends, slang, all that stuff. Right, right. Like, um, there was no, like, meme culture. (laughs) You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like people are always just like quoting things like from TikToks. Right. You know, right. Or, or these famous memes. <laughs> and it's like growing up, that just didn't happen. Like, yeah. you know, you quote shows or movies. Yeah. But so it's interesting how like and m- me and my buddies my age will joke around about how like uh-huh. people now in high school, they're like, their fashion's dialed, their right. hair's dialed, right. they're all in better shape. <laughs> Whereas, like, when we were in high school, like, our clothes were tragic, they're horrible, <laughs> like, because we didn't have social media to be like, yo, look at, like, that's kind of yeah. 
That's right. what I'll tell you right now. Right. But um, there's no one influencing. Yeah, what yeah. You're there doing. was no influencers. Yeah. Right. You know. Okay. You're like looking at People Magazine or, yeah, <laughs> or something right, like that. Right. And so you know you see a music video and you're like, oh, Justin Bieber's got some cool pants. <laughs> you know. But but now like, and I and here's the thing. Unlike a lot of people my age, yeah. a lot of people my age hate it. Uh-huh. Right. They think it's bad. They think whatever. Uh-huh. I think it's cool because the trends, everything shifts so fast. I think it's cool because now like you can kind of make anything you want cool. Right. You know? Right. You can find your niche. Okay. You know, you can find like, if you just like, you're you're, you're like your uniqueness. Yeah. And, and there's not, there's not like in style out of style. Right. There's everything in between. Right. And so if you're like, dude, I don't like, um, for instance, like, it's more in style now to kind of wear, like, baggier pants and, like, mm-hmm. big tees and stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you don't like that, mm-hmm. like, you can wear, you can still wear kind of more form-fitting stuff, and there's millions of people that do. Right. And so you're not an outcast. <laughs> right. Right? Back in the day, like, in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, especially, uh-huh. the further back you go, it was either in style or out of style. Okay. You know? So I think it's cool now, like... I think that's you true. can kind of rock anything. It's true. You know, I haven't really thought about it like that, but yeah. it's definitely true. That has changed a lot. A lot of people will kind of just wear whatever they want. And in a lot of ways, like as much as like, yeah, social media is tragic because of how much information we have. Like it has caused lots of like mental health in some ways. Mm-hmm. It also has re- really brought out a lot of genuine sides of people and a lot more authentic yeah. sides of people. Yeah. Because they feel like they've seen everything. We've experienced everything in a way through others' eyes. And so, like, because of it, we don't really care as much. And so we'll just express however we feel. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. But what, what do you think is, like, the difference between, like, all this information that we have versus, like, I don't know, I feel like you go back in time, like, 100 years. Like, wisdom was so important. Mm-hmm. But um, you look at people who were like the smartest in the world, like Einstein, you know, like they always struggled the most with mental health because they knew so much about the world. To them, it was almost like it was scary. It made the world scary because they knew so much. Mm -hmm. And now we have so much information. You kind of see that mental health kind of being passed through everybody in a way. Yeah. Um, Do you feel like there's kind of maybe like, I don't know. Like I, when I when I think about like all this information that we're getting, I mm-hmm. think of how like Satan is really trying to like put a twist on everything in the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, like maybe he sees it as an opportunity to like jump in with all this information and throw so much information at us that mm-hmm. like we no longer know what's true, what's not true, because there's just so much going on. Yeah. So like, how do we like make sure that we're like getting like good information versus like bad information and like what's like wisdom and like what's not? Yeah. Like philosophies of man versus like scripture and like yeah. doctrine. Yeah. I mean, that's like six questions, but I'll try to answer. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, you're good. Um, I, I think, I think a really important thing now with, with such an overabundance of information is when you take something in. Mm-hmm. Like, look look to, like, go deep into something instead of just reading a bunch of headlines and a bunch of, like, um, just little bite-sized pieces of information. Like, go read a whole article. Go read a 10-page article. Don't just Google it yeah. and get the first. Yeah. Don't just, you know, don't just be like, yeah, I saw this TikTok on yeah. um, what's going on in Palestine. It's pretty crazy. Now I have deep opinions on it. Right. It's like, dude, you watch a two-minute video. Right. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. hop on Wikipedia, read the history of Palestine, read the history right. and the context. And, you know, like, that's the cool thing about having so much information is you can go sh- crazy deep. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. And so to me, the way to, like, kind of separate the wheat from the chaff is to read more. I think yeah. reading is really underrated and really important. Mm-hmm. Um, and and like you said earlier, I really like this. I try to have the mindset that I'm always open to being wrong. Yeah. Right? And that's that's kind of putting the ego aside. Right. And so even though I take in information, I read stuff, I try to stay open to 
okay, I think this is right. I think this is correct. Mm-hmm. I believe it's right and correct, mm-hmm. but I'm open to being proven wrong. Right. I don't think I will be, <laughs> but I'm open to it. Yeah. You know, and I think there's some wisdom in that in, in not having the arrogance of assuming because I read something or because somebody told me something, now I know for sure. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, even with my, my belief system, my faith, I am comfortable saying I know this, this, and this, mm-hmm. but if something shows me otherwise, I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. But I've lived this long and haven't been, it hasn't been disproven. Right. You know? And, you know, maybe I'll get to the other side after life and I'll try to stay open minded. <laughs> <Right? laughs> but, but, um, I don't worry about, you know, how some people get really caught up in like, well, how do you know you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like, I don't, but I don't care. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about, do I really know that I know? Yeah. I'm like, no, I think I know. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I feel like in the church that happens a lot where they tell you to say, like, I, I remember at least for me mm-hmm. growing up, I had my leaders when we, they, when they were like teaching us how to like testify, yeah. you know, they're like, don't say like, I believe my teacher was like, say like, I know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like that's so strong. Yeah, like, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. But in a way it's kind of like, it's like kind of wrong. Like, do we know? Yeah. That's the thing. Now you're just dipping into like philosophy. <laughs> and to me, it's like, do we want to teach our kids philosophy when they're five? Yeah. So I can see both ways, right? Yeah. When I have kids, I want to just have such an open dialogue with them that I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, in my prayers, I like to say, or my testimony, mm-hmm. I like to say, like, I know that Jesus lives mm-hmm. because for me, I feel like I know. Right. You know? Right. If you're maybe a little unsure, yeah. say, like, I believe, or like, right. here's some other words you can use. Right. You know? Give them a little bit of context behind it. Yeah. Do you think it's fair to be able to say, like, I know? L- like I said, I, I don't care <laughs> if, I don't care if I'm wrong. Yeah. I don't, I don't care if, um, if semantically yeah. I'm out of line, uh-huh. to me, I feel like I know something, I'm yeah. going to say it, Yeah. whether I'm right or wrong. Right. Like, here's an example. I, I don't really know that much about, like, science or anything, oh, right. right? But I know that every morning the sun comes up, mm-hmm. right? How do I know that I know? I don't know. I see it every morning. <laughs> Um, have I done deep research to find out why the sun comes up every morning? No. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens if one morning it doesn't come up? I'll be like, that was crazy. Um, I thought it always came up. I bet it'll come up tomorrow though. <laughs> That's how I feel about God. Like I know that God exists. Yeah. Um, if somehow some way in the future I discover he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm going to, I'm going to move forward in faith assuming that I know. Yeah. I like that. It's, it's, it, it's kind of missing the mark trying to look for it in a way. Yeah. Like it's, it's not nearly as important in yeah. a way. Like you, you just want to focus on the fact that every single day, like there's something and like you can focus on that one thing. It's, it's yeah. like when like Peter walked out on the water with like mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like he was like telling him, like, just, like, focus on me. There's so much going on in the world. And I feel like that happens a lot today. Yeah. There's so much chaos and information out there going on that everyone's, like, so, everyone's, like, freaking out and in their head so much. And Jesus Christ just says, like, just relax. Yeah. Just, like, focus on me. Mm-hmm. And, like, in that very second when he, like, focuses back on him, he's able to step out of that water again yeah. and join Jesus Christ again. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of the point that we kind of miss a lot of the time is that it's there's there is lots of information and we could be right or wrong and um maybe that's part of the whole satan thing like he he yeah. just wants to confuse us in mm-hmm. whatever way we can when reality is it's just it's very simple yeah and and dude like you know you'll talk to people that don't believe or for whatever reason don't want you to believe yeah. right and and they'll try to you know they'll talk about like how do you how do you know you know and yeah. how could you possibly know yeah. and i'm like well dude i have one word for you and it's faith yeah you know like yeah. if if i fully knew if i had a perfect knowledge i would require no faith yeah. you know so all of us you could make the argument that everyone here on earth including the prophet the brethren 
Mm-hmm. The the best members of the church you've ever met, the most faithful people, yeah. they don't know with the perfect knowledge anything. Right. Right? But they know well enough, yeah. you know, and they're they're exercising their faith. So I don't like to get too caught up on the wording of it all, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, that's honestly very fair. Yeah. I, leaders of the church can be um, a hard topic to jump into, too. Sure. Just because of that same exact thing like you just mentioned. Um, but I kind of want to backtrack a little bit now. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've we've already kind of just like jumped into something, <laughs> yeah, 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 and went down a little a Let's little do the intro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might as well introduce you now. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Let everyone know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so this is Taylor Church. <laughs> um, I had him come on. Uh, we're oblivious. Um, I think you reached out to me because of the video, maybe that you saw with me and Tao Tai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then I was looking at your stuff and everything, and it really resonated with me. It seemed like we're kind of getting at a lot of the same things, lots of kind of different philosophies and, like, religion and God. And so I feel like we're able to kind of really have, like, a very honest and deep conversation and maybe kind of jump into some, like, questions that, like, um, people might have or, like, I don't know, that I even have that we can just kind of, like, dive into a little bit. Um, But I kind of want to go into a little bit of your background a little bit more. Okay. And kind of go into like your journey and your path with God as to why you have the belief system that you do have. Because mm-hmm. it seems to me like you kind of like you've seen a lot, you've been through a lot, and like you have like a way of thinking that is very, very firm. Yeah. And I, I really admire that. And so I want to kind of like jump into why you're so firm in what you believe. Yeah. So like what was your first experience like with God? I know you said you grew up just south of Provo, right? Yeah, I moved around a little bit before that. So I grew up in Seattle, Vegas, and Phoenix. Oh, did you? And then moved to Utah when I was 14. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And so what was that like moving around and then coming to Utah? Why did you come to Utah? Um, So my mom's from here. So we moved around for a bunch of reasons. And then, um, yeah, we just decided to kind of come back by my mom's family. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, moving to Utah was wild. Um, it's just so different than everywhere else. Yeah. Right? And <laughs> Were you guys LDS before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, everywhere else you're an extreme minority, yeah. you know. And and so, yeah, and then you move to a place and it's just kind of common. It's it's most most everyone. Mm-hmm. So it's it takes a little bit to get used to. Um, yeah. It's like... Yeah, it's, it was weird having, like, everyone at school be your same religion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what was that like? Like, I feel like um, for me when I, like, went on my mission and I went out and experienced other people who were the minority in their in their faiths, I experienced, I, I noticed that they were um, really having to fight for their faith a lot more. Did you feel yeah. like when you got here, like, it was a little bit easier to fight for your faith? It's, it's hard because I was a kid, yeah. you know, before I moved to Utah, I was, you know, zero to 13 years old. Maybe didn't care too much. And I, you just don't think that deeply. I <laughs> right. think you're like, yeah, this is what I'm doing on Sunday. Yeah. This is what I believe <laughs> Right now. Like I'm going to recess. Right. You know? <laughs> but, um, I think when I moved here, I realized that faith, church activity, mm-hmm. investment in the gospel, it's all a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas before I was just kind of like, yeah, this is what Mormons are like. Right. Um, the people that I see on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> and at school and in my town, I was like, well, basically everyone is either Mormon or used to be Mormon yeah. or is kind of Mormon yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so I realized it's a spectrum. Yeah. And so I think I think that's an important lesson to learn that yeah. everyone doesn't need to be on the same page. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, that, that is honestly a very fair point. Everyone's life journey in, in spirituality and in everything are going to look very different and yeah. be very different. And that, that is something that I that I struggle with personally, like quite a bit. Um, I personally moved here when I was like two. Mm-hmm. And then I've been in Utah County my whole life. Yeah. And so it's like all I've really known. And so for me, I find it, I find myself putting people in boxes a lot mm-hmm. and like really just like saying everyone's kind of the same when in reality people are all very, very, very different in their faiths and you will find people of different parts in different parts of their journey with God all over the world and where they are. It's just here. It's more magnified. So it's easy. It's, it's easy for me to kind of just put a 
a blank face as yeah. to what it all is when right. in reality it's it's not really yeah because even even if you want to take everyone that is super active and is at church every week yeah if you dissected and went deep into each of their testimonies you would see it's a wide spectrum as well yeah and so I think it's a little reckless to assume that everyone is kind of one way or another yeah you know how would you say like if you were trying to help people strengthen their testimony more um how would you try to like because i I know jesus christ like ministers ministers to the one Mm -hmm. how would you kind of like try to minister to the masses if you could or do you feel like that's just kind of missing the point of like what jesus christ did just ministering to the one i think you do both right because jesus ministered to the one right? right but he also ministered to the masses yeah you know but right. also, I'm not Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you got know? the long hair. Though. You know, I, <laughs> I'll tell you what—it's easier to look like him than act like him. <laughs> um, but I think, let's see. Here's here's my goal in trying to spread what I believe yeah. and to strengthen other people's beliefs. Yeah, I want to be the person that when people meet or get to know, they feel like, I can I can go talk to Taylor about anything. Mm-hmm. I can, if I'm having doubts, if I got beef, if I'm discouraged, if I'm lonely, if I'm hopeless, he's somebody that'll listen to me. And to me, that's how I can minister to the one. Um, but that's also how, like, to me, that's how I can help people the best, right? Mm-hmm. And And maybe they get that feeling by listening to my podcast or by, you know, seeing a, a reel on Instagram or whatever, yeah. they, they they feel slightly less alone for a minute. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I, I that resonates with me because I feel like I'm kind of going down a similar path mm-hmm. where I find it difficult um, as I'm trying to kind of spread this message further and talk more about the gospel and about God in a more open light where um, I run into scenarios where I feel like I'm just like, I can't, I can't always be very specific in the things that I say, but I can openly talk about the way that I feel. And by Mm -hmm. the way, and by being open and authentic, I feel like it allows other people to do so too. Yeah. So like with you, like with your podcast and everything that you're doing, um, do you feel like that's something that you've seen a lot then? people have been able to turn to you because of it? Um, I think, I think people sometimes like, yeah, they see how open and vulnerable I am on social media and my podcast. And so they're like, Mm -hmm. it kind of takes some walls down. Yeah. And in a weird way, it's like, like sometimes I'll meet people and they've already like listened to four hours of me talking. (laughs) And, and so it's a weird, almost like a, they come in feeling like they kind of know me a little bit. Like they've already been talking with you. Yeah, and and so I think their walls are down a little bit, and yeah. and I love that. Like I, I love for anyone to feel like they can come talk to me about anything at any time. Interesting. Yeah. I like that a lot. So what is your end goal then with your podcast? Um, I don't have an end goal. Like <laughs> it's just... It's just something I'm passionate about, and it's it's... It's a um, a piece of creative work that I want to just continue to do until I get dementia and <laughs> people are like, "Bro, your your episodes aren't making any sense." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Well, now they're funny." <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I just because um, I'm a writer, so I, I write books and yeah, I saw that in your in your profile, mm-hmm. but I, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. Um, so I write, I write fiction and nonfiction. They're pretty different project to project, but the only reason I brought that up is I just want to continually put out art, yeah. put out content, and hope that it resonates with people. Mm-hmm. And that's my, that's my goal, right? Yeah. I don't have like a, well, if I've done this, this for this long or this many episodes and I make this much money, that's my end goal. Yeah. My goal is to just put out, creative work and hope that someone hears it 
Someone feels less alone. Someone feels more understood. Someone feels happy. Someone laughs. Yeah. Um, and that's any, even though, you know, I don't have a huge audience or anything yet, but anytime somebody messages me and says, hey, man, that episode was awesome. It helped me with this, this, and this. I'm like, okay, then it's all worth it. Yeah. All the crap I like, all the like beginning episodes where my phone died in the middle of filming, like all the disasters, mm-hmm. all the hard work, if, if it affects one person, it's worth it. I love that. Yeah. I, I've noticed a similar thing with like what I've been putting out too. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it does make it a lot. It does make it worth it. Yeah. And it's very fun to do. Honestly, it makes it really enjoyable. It feels like, you know, you get to be a part of, what God is really telling us to do in these days, you know, like yeah. to gather, to help people yeah. in these last days. Yeah. And, and I mean, for me, it's like when I'm, when I'm putting out a lot of creative work, mm-hmm. I'm my happiest. Yeah. Right. And so if I can do this full time, like that's an amazing way to live in, in my opinion. Are you at that point yet? No, not quite. I still have to supplement with other, sources of income. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard to monetize art, but I think yeah. if you're truly passionate about it, it's worth it. You know, do you want to give your podcast a little shout out real quick? Sure. <laughs> it's uh, it's called of stone and clay. Um, and it's basically just about what it means to be human. Like you it. know, it's me digging into people's souls. It's me trying to figure out what in the world we're trying to do on this little earth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. It's very fun, honestly. Definitely go give it a look. It's honestly really interesting. I liked it a lot. Um, I, I want to ask about um, where you first started being curious in God. Mm-hmm. I know everyone kind of has that um, moment of conversion, I guess. Yeah. Like, every, like, like on our missions, like we we taught and, and we talk about converts a lot, but everybody really is a convert in their own way. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, my, my conversion happened on my mission. Yeah. What, what was like that moment for you? When was that? And how did that happen? Oh, dude, this is a hard question for me because I never felt like I wasn't converted yet. Yeah. I felt like, you know how people have different gifts of the spirit? Yeah. Um, I always felt like one of my gifts was just faith. Yeah. I felt like, from a, being a small child, I just, what I was taught felt right in my heart. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're that young, you don't really dig too deep into it, mm-hmm. right? I just was like, yeah, this feels good. I like when I go to church. I like when I'm reading these books. Yeah. Um, and then, and you know, it wasn't always like my dad left the church when I was like, 12 or 13. Oh, really? Right? And so I had the green light to not go. Yeah. Um, but it never crossed my mind. Right. Um, and it wasn't because, like, I thought my dad was evil or anything. Like, yeah. and, and me and my dad are as close as can be. But um, and my dad's a wonderful, wonderful human. Yeah. But, but yeah, I had every reason to step aside if I wanted to. Right. Right. The opportunity was there. But I, um, I guess what's the simplest way to say it is the gospel always brought me joy. Yeah. And when I was younger, I don't know how well I could have articulated it, but as I've gotten older, we'll say a deeper conversion that I've had Mm -hmm. is realizing how desperately I need God. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just a luxury. Right. To have God, it's a necessity. Okay. And I, like that. I think you learn that through the crucibles of life, through yeah. going through stuff. Right. And you realize, if I'm doing this all by myself, this is a whole lot harder. Right. And, and the hell I'm in is a whole lot deeper. Um, and, and so, yeah, when you, when you realize how deeply you need a Savior, um, I think, I think you get more converted. Yeah. 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 So more so kind of over time and as time went on, everything, you just started to need him more and more and more. And yeah. More. It just, it just got deeper and there was never a single moment that I could pick out that was like, oh, this is when everything changed. Mm-hmm. But 
Yeah, and listen, God was always beside beside me. Yeah. It you know, it took me a while to maybe realize that even when I was being a knucklehead, yeah. He didn't he didn't turn around and and go away and wait till I was good again. Right. He was always right there. It was me that turned around. Right. You know. Yeah. And and it took me a while to figure that out. Yeah. But yeah. I think that action happens a lot more often than we think it does too. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I noticed I was doing a lot in my past where um like I feel like true humility I was being humble by like punishing myself when I felt like I was doing something that was wrong or I wasn't doing everything I was supposed to be that God was telling me to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so I would punish myself by turning away from him and like going into the corner and like putting myself in timeout in a way. Yeah. When in reality, like he's sitting over here with open arms and he's like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like I'm right here to help you out. Like all you have to do is just turn around and I'm right here. Yeah. And like you put yourself in that dark corner, just like with your head, with your hands up by your head and you're just like, but I I realized I was doing that a lot more recently, and I I've been focusing a lot more on that. I've been trying to at every every single moment where something something any temptation or anything happens, mm-hmm. I try to turn straight to him instead. Yeah, I feel like that's that's the real humility that happens. Yeah. and and like to me, the easiest way to either be depressed or stay depressed is to self isolate. Yeah. Right. And I think, like you said, that's kind of your tendency. Maybe when you've sinned or you've done something you're not proud of. Right. You're like, I'm going to go in the corner where I deserve and yeah. put my head down <laughs> right. and no snacks for me, <laughs> you know. But um, but even if you don't believe in God, yeah. like I think instead of self-isolating, maybe you don't reach out. Maybe you don't turn to God, but you turn to your friends. Right. You turn to your family. Right. And. And you realize that they're waiting there with open arms, yeah. you know? And so, yeah, I think self-isolating is is just never really the answer, even yeah. though that's kind of our default, right? It is, yeah. 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 That natural man in us kind of just wants to, I don't know, punish ourselves maybe. Yeah, we, and we, we want to kind of, we want to pity ourselves, yeah. and we want to kind of just sulk a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. Um, you're talking about faith before and how you kind of feel like you're, blessed with this gift of faith. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you feel like you've seen a difference in your life by just always believing? Um, Do you, like, for myself, I I, I question a lot, Mm -hmm. and and I find it fun to question sometimes. Yeah. Do you find yourself questioning often? Um, Here's the thing. I, I question things. And I think about things a lot, um, but I also, I can't remember who said this, but I think it's important to also like doubt your doubts, Yeah, you know? Right. And so, yeah, I like, I think it's healthy to always be considering and, and thinking and pondering and, and saying like, yeah, is this, is this right? Is this really the way it is? Um, but I don't, I don't just go digging for for garbage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What is, what are your, what is your take on, on blind faith? How do you make sure that you stay away from blind faith? Um, (laughs) I don't know. I, I, I just think with all the experiences I've had thus far in my life, it's just not blind anymore. Uh Right. I think that's maybe a question for, when you're younger and you're not really sure what you believe, maybe it's easier to just follow your family or your friends or whatever. And maybe that's a little bit blind. Yeah. But, um, I think eventually you get to a point where you come face to face with your testimony and you have to, you have to decide. Yeah. Yeah. What was your experiences like, um, on your mission for you? I mean, you grew up in the church. Um, your parents are divorced. No, no, they're still together. They're still together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you went on your mission, mm-hmm. um, was there any big change that happened for you or anything that you really felt like really stood out to you in your faith? Um, there's a couple things. I think I realized my mission was the first time that I was praying just so constantly yeah. You know, and there were some really hard times where I was like, dude, I've been praying nonstop 
that like this family will get baptized and it just doesn't work out. And then I meet this new family, pray, 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 and then it doesn't work out. Uh And so I had to realize that like having faith doesn't mean you get what you ask for every time. Right. It doesn't mean that there are no hardships. It doesn't mean that sometimes God's timing isn't yours. Like, I think before my mission, all my prayers were pretty just, you know, like, you know, bless my family that, you know, we can stay healthy. And everything was pretty good. Yeah. Everything was pretty chill. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong, I had an amazing mission, but... But yeah, you're just you're constantly thinking about people and praying for people, and I, I think I learned a lot more about just like free agency, right? You know, like you can do everything in your power, but people still have their free agency. Absolutely. You know, even with like, there's been girls that I've like I've wanted to marry so bad mm-hmm. and have prayed for it, but they have their free agency, and maybe it was even right for both of us and it would have worked out and God would have loved it. Yeah. But she still has her free agency. Right. You know, she can tell me to get lost, (laughs) you know? Um, And then another big lesson I had was um, just, this is going to sound maybe cliche, but just, I learned a lot about patience and love. Like I had some love. Difficult companions. Yeah. You know, I had a companion that didn't talk to me for three days. Really? Yeah. (laughs) No way. (laughs) For three whole days, and it was just me and him in the house. What happened? (laughs) He just, one day it was raining, and we're in Brazil, so it rains all the time. Uh Uh-huh. So you can't stop work. Yeah. Right? (laughs) But it's raining, and he's like, you know, dives for cover under this, um, some awning, and he's like, he's like, (sighs) I was like, I was like, sorry, bro. Like, we got an appointment. Like, we got to go. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not going out in this rain. This rain's crazy, bro. And I'm like, okay, well, you can follow me or not. Like, we're going to this appointment. You know. <laughs> no way. And I mean, I maybe could have handled it a little <laughs> softer, but like, I was like, and it wasn't even raining that hard. That's yeah. the thing. It wasn't torrential downpour. It's just kind of raining. Right. Um. And so. <laughs> we get into the house. I'm talking to people, whatever. We do our little spiel, and I kind of look over at him. You know, it's kind of his part, his turn. And he just goes like this to me. He goes, no way. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, really, bro? But I'm like, I'm not going to say anything now, like, in front of these people. So I just, I do the whole lesson by myself. No right? way. <laughs> and then and then we leave the house, and I'm like, bro. <laughs> You're killing me. Like, <laughs> no you're shot. still mad about the freaking rain? Like, no let's, shot. <laughs> let's get back on, <laughs> like, and then he didn't, like, at that point, he was, like, muttering some stuff to me. He was, he was like, he was a native Brazilian, yeah. and he was, like, you know, you arrogant American and blah, 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 blah. And I was, like, uh-huh. I was like whatever, bro. Get it out of your system. Mm-hmm. We're cool. <laughs> and then, um, and the thing is, I'm not a very contentious person, uh-huh. right? So I'm just, like, all right, bro, you'd be mad. Let me know when you're good. <laughs> like, I got no problem. <laughs> and then we go back to the place. I ask him something. He's just... No shot. So I'm like, okay. So next morning, I'm like, surely this isn't, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right. Sure enough, dude. No I'm, a- I'm asking him, uh, you know, what was, your, what was your personal study about, whatever. Here's where we got to go today. And he just goes... No shot. So I'm just like... <laughs> I told him, I'm like, bro, if you want to be this stubborn, that's fine, but we're not going to stop working. Like, yeah. we got people to teach. We got people to baptize. Yeah. So you can just, you can just sulk and just follow behind me, whatever you want to do. No way. So for, yeah, for three days, I taught lessons all by myself. He didn't help at all he didn't in the say lessons a either? Word. No way. Mm-hmm. So what ended it? Did you have to say something? Bro, this is what was cool. So that last night I get on my knees and I'm just praying and I'm just like, I'm like, God, I can't, this can't continue. Yeah. (laughs) This is bad stuff. (laughs) But I was pissed at this point. Right. Right. I'm just like, what is this guy's problem? And, you know, and I'm 19, so I'm, Uh I'm a little less rational probably. Right. But I'm just like, I'm on my knees and I'm angry. And I really can't get a lot of words out. I'm just on my knees, 
angry. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not going to give up this prayer. I'm going to stay here until I feel better, until, I don't know, something comes to my mind. Mm-hmm. So I stay there for probably like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. It was bad. And then I'm still on my knees. He comes over and taps my shoulder. He's got tears in his eyes. And he just gives me a hug. And he's like, I'm sorry, bro. No way. And I didn't I didn't need anything else. I didn't need an explanation. I didn't need like, like well, bro, what's been your problem the last three days? Right. You know, why, why is this such a big deal? I was just like, all right. And we hugged it out and we were good. Yeah. And then, um, and dude, before that, we had had issues before that. One day he told me he was like, he really wanted to punch me in the face. <laughs> and I said, I said, bro, please do. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what will happen. I'll call the mission president and I'll get a new companion. Yeah. So please punch me. No yeah. way. <laughs> no <laughs> and he, he didn't, way. you know, <laughs> but, but we had had, we had had some beef yeah. and, um, and then I get transferred and, and he cries like a baby. Really? And then I was older than him. And then I, when I went home, I was in the office the last day and he called the office and wanted to talk to me, wanted to say goodbye. And he was like, He's like, bro, you're the best companion I ever had. No way. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah. So after that beef was just settled and you guys just like clicked. Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing is, like, I was pissed at the situation, yeah. but I never had crazy beef with him. Right. Um, he's just a difficult person, yeah. you know. But the lesson I learned was like when somebody comes to you in sackcloth and ashes, yeah. like you let you let them come. You, right. you don't, you know, it could have been, it would have been easy for me to be like, Bro, like I appreciate you apologizing, but what is your deal? Right. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's just not, you know, there's no point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's a lot, there's a lot to dive in, even in that whole story. But just like for me, it just shows like the unconditional love that just it just doesn't really matter at the end. Like there's a lot of people who are gonna have their opinions and different thoughts of things. And I, I had my companions too mm-hmm. who were difficult and hard to deal with. But like at the end, the work is the work. Yeah. And we've all got our our demons, our, our things that we're all fighting through on our own. And we don't always need to let it out in, in a way that is going to reflect on someone else. Like, it, it's, it's honestly, for me, it's like when people act out in a certain way, they're really trying to tell you something. Yeah. There, there's something that's on their mind. And it is something that they're facing in on the inside mm-hmm. that they're trying to figure out, but they can't figure out. Like someone who is like making fun of people or like is always like, it's like um, telling people that they that they look bad or something like that. You know, like most of the time, those people are struggling themselves on the inside with that exact same thing. Yeah. And so it's it's sometimes it's a very easy puzzle to figure out if you really think about it. Mm-hmm. Like people will reflect off what they're struggling with on the inside. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it can be hard to approach because it's a difficult situation to call someone out for it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's just everyone's always going through their own stuff on the inside. And so you got to be very patient with people and very calm and relaxed when people act out in a certain way. Yeah. Because they're just really trying to tell you something. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that it's like you could make the argument of like, K, but they don't have the right to talk to me like that right. or they're being so disrespectful right? or it's so inappropriate, but it's like, that's your ego talking, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. um, I saw this interesting video, you know who Gary V is? Yeah. yeah. So, so Gary V, he was, he was meeting with, you know, he's a social media guru, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, some of his stuff's kind of whack, but some of his stuff I like. Yeah. Right. But he was, he was meeting with these like, young teenage like influenced girls Uh and they were like what do you do like how do you deal with like really hateful like comments Uh and like trollers and stuff Uh and Uh he's like he's like i realized a long time ago that most of those people are in a lot of pain yeah and so my response is only compassion yeah i feel bad for those people and I respond with love. Yeah. And I was like, that's such a cool, such a cool point. Like, but you know, when you're going through stuff and you, you check your comments and someone's like, he looks ugly <laughs> or like, 
that guy's an idiot or yeah. wow, he's still not married. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, right. it's hard to not take personally, but uh-huh. you're like, okay, obviously for somebody to be so like blatantly mean, yeah. they're probably going through something. Right. You know? Right. And I see comments like that, that come through a lot sometimes yeah. on different things. And like my, my initial thought every time is like, oh, I can respond or say something. And then, yeah. and then every time I'd like double tie the screen delete <laughs> i'm just that's my ego talking yeah, yeah. like i just gotta just let them talk yeah let them it's, say their it's, piece. it's funny so i i haven't really had any you know here's the thing i'm not big enough really to get any hate <laughs> right, right now right. but i um i was i've been on a couple like lds podcasts that have pretty big uh-huh. following and so i've had some there's been some people co- in the comments that are are saying stuff yeah and right. i'll just i'll heart their comment and then I'll respond with I'll tr- I'll try to, because I know they're they're go- they're going in the comments looking for a fight. Yes. Right. Yes. But they're not getting a fight with me. Yeah. They're gonna get love, <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna get, like, I literally responded to a comment like right before I walked in here. Really. <laughs> this this dude was like you know this 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 and it wasn't personal but it was just about the video about yeah. the content. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah man I could totally see that side. I think for me, it's like this, this, and this. Anyways, like, really appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Like, and he's probably like, that that, that comment probably pissed him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you just can't, it doesn't help to be combative. Yeah. You know? No, I definitely think that's true. I, I think of um, how Jesus Christ deals with everything in a very similar way. Um, he just has so much compassion, compassion towards, like, everybody in their place and, and then their spot and wherever they are. Um, and, and it, it goes back again to like, um, always ministering to the one. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that, that, that part being a big part of it, like at the end, like everybody's, everybody are such like cry babies and we're yeah. just like children, just like mm-hmm. bickering and fighting in he, in like adult bodies. You right. Know? Right. And so like, if you can just like go to those people and help them like open, not open their eyes by like trying to tell them that they're wrong, but just like show them that they're seen and that they're loved and that you care about them. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the times walls drop Yeah, and you see the same thing with Jesus Christ with when he was finding all of his disciples, when he was walking down the streets, talking to people and Pharisees and other people were calling him out and saying all these things. He had nothing to say, but like love towards them. And um, you think of like Mary Magdalene, you know, she was in a very, deep dark place and then he came in and was just like just called her by name and just told her that he like sees her like yeah. i like i understand you and i and i see you and that meant everything to her yeah she just wanted to be seen mm-hmm. and a lot of the time that's all people really want people just want to be seen and hurt and so just giving them that chance to be seen and hurt i think is just like that part is like how you are ministering to the one yeah. Yeah. every single time mm-hmm. And that's the part that I love the most about being able to do all of this is um, it gives you that opportunity to do that more often. Mm-hmm. And it breaks down those walls where people can see me being vulnerable and by me being vulnerable, other people can be vulnerable. Yeah, totally, dude. Which is the best part of the gospel. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But um, what, is, what is like um, your take going into um, this world right now of which we live in? Um, seems like a lot of chaos and a lot of um, distractions everywhere Mm -hmm. and things happening in the world. How do you make sure that you stay focused and centered on what's important without forgetting um, the minor details of what we're supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Meaning I need to be calm and composed in what I'm doing and just remember Jesus Christ is what's important, the focus. But like, what is what is the action that we're supposed to be taking in these last days as well? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Kind of. Um, <laughs> that's that's a hard question. The, I love these questions, by the way. Um, I think, first of all, I don't know how well I do it. You know, yeah. like I'm I I try, but I I think it is a constant struggle to stay focused and to realize what's important and to stay centered. Mm-hmm. Um, I um th- there's this there's this show I really like where this guy 
he was talking to, he's trying to win back this girl. Yeah. And he was saying to her, he's like, he's like, I don't know, I don't know where I've been, but I, I let my, I let my center move. Uh-huh. And, I, and I, I just liked, you know, he was trying to explain to her, kind of trying to apologize why he's been such a knucklehead. Yeah. Right. And he's like, I just love that, that phrase, like, I let my center move. Yeah. And I, th- I think it takes a lot of work. I think you have to be really v- like vigilant about um, figuring out the things that keep you centered, right? right? And for for some people, it's different. Like um, for me, like if I'm not reading a lot, whether yeah. that's you know that includes scriptures, but just in general, yeah. if I'm not reading a lot, I don't feel as centered, okay. right? And bec- and part of that reason is because if I'm reading less, I'm probably consuming more social media, mm-hmm. right? A lot of times I read, like, I'm, sc- I'm just in bed, like, scrolling mindlessly. mindlessly yeah. and, and I'm like, I need to stop and pick up a book. Right. right? <laughs> and so for me, it's a good litmus test. Like, am I reading a lot? If not, I'm probably wasting time right. doing other stuff. Right. But not everyone's a big reader, so you have to figure out what works for you. Another is, like, if I'm... How often am I, am I working out? Right. You know, if I, not that working out's like the most important thing in the world. Yeah. But to me, if I'm not taking care of my physical, uh-huh. sometimes my spiritual slips and my right. mental f- slips. Right. And so to me, it's all, it's all correlated. And so yeah. I think it's important to, you know, there's some really basic answers like, you know, go to church and yeah. read your scriptures and pray every night. And, you know, if, if it's, to go to the temple or to do missionary work. There's all these really simple, basic answers. Yeah. But there's so many other things too. Right. Um, I think, and it all, it all can tie back to the spiritual. If you're a spiritual person, the physical stuff can also be spiritual. Right. You know, working out can be spiritual. Right. Staying in shape can be f- spiritual. In like what ways? Um, I think if you're improving your body and trying to become your best self... Uh-huh. Is that not trying to like get closer to divinity? Okay, um, be more godlike. Yeah, right. And it's not it's not from a place of vanity. Like I want to have like godlike abs. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like I know my body could look better. I know uh-huh. I could eat better. Yeah. And so I'm going to try and do that. And to me, right. that's godly. Okay. Um, and it's same with. Like um, same with almost every area of my life. It's like, like my, my social, my social life. Like to me, if I'm not spending time with my friends, if I'm not reaching out to my family, if I haven't called my mom in a while, right. Um, these social things, these familial things, then to me, like my spirituality starts to slip because it's, it's all connected. Like to me, connection with these people is analogous to connection with God. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that I resonate a lot with that because I, I think of myself, um, if I'm, if I'm not physically fit, mm-hmm. I feel like my mental side starts to slip a little bit yeah. more. And you are physically fit. I, I gave you a hug <laughs> and I was like, this dude's sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's 75 hard. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing 75 soft and it's just, <laughs> it's not working. Bro. Then I'll get you back on it. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's definitely, I see a lot of that aspect where my physical side, if it's not up to par, mm-hmm. my, um, I start to feel less mentally clear. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not a hundred percent on my spiritual side, I can't be a hundred percent physical because I'm not, I'm not in the moment. Yeah. I can't be very in the moment. I'm just going through the, I'm just going through the phases mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. I'm going through the motions. And so I, I think that's, that's honestly very, very true. And I, and I, I really resonate with that. And I, I think about it a lot, mm-hmm. but honestly, it's almost like every day I could, I could just make like four check boxes is like, have I, have I, t- have I taken care of my mental health? Mm-hmm. Have I taken care of my spiritual health, yeah. my physical health, my emotional and social health and like making sure that I'm taking care of those things every day. Because a lot of times I feel myself going through, like it feels like phases sometimes mm-hmm. in yeah. life where I feel like 
I'll go out with people and I feel like I can't talk to anyone for some reason, or I just feel a little bit mentally drained for some reason. You're just in your head. And I'm, and yeah. And, and maybe, maybe there's just a different um, way to look at it, but I, I think maybe taking care of those things and making sure that those things are taken care of, mm-hmm. I can take care of everything else yeah. properly. Yeah, dude. So before I came to this podcast, I, I went to dinner with my buddy. Right? Yeah. And, and he's like, he's like my best friend. He's my roommate. We spend tons of time together. Yeah. But I, I got to dinner and I was just like, I was just like checking, checking some notifications, you know, maybe a little DM, <laughs> you know, a little something. Yeah. And, and like, but we're kind of talking too. Yeah. And then I realized I was like, dude, yeah, I'm a little distracted by my phone, but I was like, I'm also, I came into this dinner just like, only thinking about myself and my problems and yeah. what I've got to do later tonight and what I want to do this weekend and what girls yeah. are texting me back and what girls aren't. <laughs> yeah. And and I was like, dude, just be present with your friend right now. Yeah. And and so I just put my phone down and had an awesome dinner. Yeah. But sometimes you got to kind of check yourself. Yeah. You know, because you you'll show up to places and you wonder why you're like, I just don't feel like talking to anyone or I'm kind of in my head. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's because you're just thinking about yourself. Yeah. You know. No, that is so, so, so true. Yeah. Like, um, I, I was I was listening to another podcast recently where they were talking about a similar thing. And um it's it, it almost sounds schizophrenic to do this, but it it's it's like not like schizophrenic, but like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um but in every single moment, if you can if you can almost just like imagine that that is like your last moment with them. Mm-hmm. In a way it makes you scarce about like never wanting to lose them. Yeah. And so you really, really want to be there in that moment. And so like, if I can make sure like in every single situation that I'm, that I'm in, like I, I, I I strive to make sure that in every single interaction that I have with somebody, I I leave the interaction with people feeling like they felt like they could come closer to Christ in some way Mm -hmm. or that they felt understood and that they feel like they, they learned something about Christ or, or or something in some way. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that the best way to do that is by really just like being there and making them feel heard and seen. And being in the moment is one of the most important things because you're so right. Everyone is in their own worlds. Mm-hmm. And when I was younger, my dad would always tell me, he's like, Ruben, you're living in your own world. Yeah. You know? And it's like, it's so true. Like we have this like bubble and are like around our heads sometimes where we just are thinking about all those different things that are going on all the time when like, if we just like drop it all and kind of just have like that childlike mindset where I'm not thinking about like dinner on the table later tonight, I just, I know eventually it's going to happen and yeah. I'm, and, and it, it's going to be there. Cause it always, it always is. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to live here and now, like where I'm at and, and, and live in my feet. Yeah. That's another thing I love about podcasting, right? Is yeah. I have to be fully present yeah. To for this to be re- a remotely good episode, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. and I can't even like, but if me and you are just homies, yeah. and you're like, hey, let's go talk, let's just go, let's just go kick it, let's just talk. Yeah, it's hard for me to be this focused, this dialed in, because there's no consequence of, oh, hold on, hold on, real quick, you know, right? Or like, I'm, I'm gonna go get a drink or whatever. Like, there's a million little things, right? But I love, I love these moments because I can turn my phone off. And I can just be like, I only have one purpose right now right. is to talk to you right? <laughs> and for you to talk to me. Right. And so it's, it's a cool thing that you don't like, because sometimes like I'll interview my friends on my podcast yeah. and people are like, people are like, why don't you just like, that's, is that weird? Like you just, why don't you just talk to them like yeah. at your place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, why do you have to do a podcast with them? And like, it's really, it's a unique Excuse. Yeah, it's a good excuse, but it's a unique format where we have no distractions. Yeah. Our only purpose is to talk. Right. You know? Right. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, and, and how can we implement that more in everyday life? Though, too? I think, I think like you said, I just love the idea of, of thinking, okay, this, you know, not to be, like, dramatic, but, you know, this might be the last time I ever spend with this person, right? And, and... Here's the thing, like, you probably have, if you look back at all the people in your life, you probably have a bunch of friends that 
it's not like you guys broke up or had beef, but you don't really talk to anyone, right? right? Old friends from high school, yeah. maybe some old roommates, old yeah. mission companions, whatever, right? right? The funny thing is, you probably don't remember, like you probably, the last time you saw them, you weren't thinking, this will be it, I'll probably never see you again. Yeah. But it, it just happens, yeah. right? And so I love that idea of thinking like, you know, I'll probably, you know, after this podcast, I'll probably see Ruben again. I, I like him. Maybe we'll podcast again. Maybe we'll become homies. Who knows? But I'm going to dap him up and I'm going to like, I'm going to act like this is an important moment. Yeah. And I don't need to be dramatic and be like, he might die. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but but I, can, I can recognize, you know, this is a cool moment. Yeah. It's a gift. I might not get it again. Yeah. So let me kind of savor it. Um, but that's hard to do when you're with people you see all the time. Right, like family and yeah. other things. Yeah. Close, close. But friends. like, I, I was listening to this guy who he was like, he was in like his 50s, I think. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, so I live in LA. My parents live in New York. Right. And he's like, I see them probably two or three times a year. Yeah. We're going for Christmas, sometimes Thanksgiving, maybe a wedding or something. Right. Right. And he's like, so I was like, yeah, I see my parents a decent amount, as yeah. much as anyone. And then he was like, but then I sat down and realized, okay, my parents are 70. Yeah. Um, let's say they live to 90, which is generous. Right. Um, that's another 20 years, me seeing them an average of two times a year. That means I'm going to see my parents 40 more times, and that's it. Yeah. And when you put the, a number to it, that's, um, that's kind of crazy. And you realize, oh, maybe I need to savor these moments. Maybe I'll only have 20 more or maybe right. 30 more. Right. Um, and maybe I'll be lucky and it'll be 100 more. Right. But it, everything's limited. Right. You know? Right. No, I, I, I like that way of thinking towards it. I think I heard something like that recently, too. It, it really made me sit. I think that night I heard it. I, I really sat with my parents for the, for, for the first time in a while. I just, like, really took it in. Because so I... I see my parents all the time, mm-hmm. but sometimes I kind of just forget, and I and I jump into like my old habits of just like my teenage self of just like, hi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love you, bye, right, you know? right. But like I I really need to take in those moments a lot more, and 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 even outside of that, make them feel seen and heard, but even like make my other friends feel seen and heard, mm-hmm. or even those who. I might not even know, look up to me in any way, or maybe just a stranger or something. Mm-hmm. But like, by giving them that moment yeah. to them, it can be very special and beneficial for them. And who knows, you might really save someone from something that yeah. you never really know what they're yeah. going through. Yeah, and you never know what's going to kind of mean the world to somebody. Yeah, you know, um, I I remember. My, I had two cousins growing up. I still have them. But they were like, you know, like five to seven years older than me. Yeah. And they were studs. They, they played baseball and football. They both, one played professional baseball. The other played just college baseball. One of them had an offer to play football too. Like they were yeah. just studs. Yeah. And I remember, and like, we were pretty close, but they were just old enough that like I was just kind of a just a runt. You right, know? right. I was just an annoying little cousin. Right. You know, they were like sixteen and seventeen and I'm like ten. Right. You know. Um, but I looked up to them so much. Yeah. And I remember one random Saturday, I don't know what compelled him to do it, but one of my cousins called me, you know, called my house phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. Yeah. I'm 10. I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> you know? Um, and he's like, um, he's like, hey, dude, I thought it'd be fun if we went to a movie. Yeah. And so we went to a movie and then we went to Jamba Juice after. Yeah. And it was like the best day of my life. Yeah. Because I was just like, dude, the fact that he wanted to hang out with me, yeah. like, it meant so much to me and I still think about it sometimes. Yeah. And it's funny, I... A couple of years ago, I was chatting with his mom, my aunt, uh-huh. and I told her that story. She's like, oh, she like started tearing up. She's like, I never knew that happened. Really? And I was like, really? I figured somebody told him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But um, but yeah, you, you never know. You never know what 
what it's going to kind of make somebody's day. Honestly, I, I think we should make that more normal where people, if you feel like you're bored some night and instead of just like uh, taking a, uh, I'm going to kick it back, watch a movie, do something by myself or like mm-hmm. with like, like a few close friends that I always see, yeah. take a break from that. Go look in your phone or think about a cousin like that or a friend who, or a friend from church that you just never get to really see and kind of get them just that moment to be seen yeah. and you know what it's it's kind of I think some people don't like this thought because it makes them feel like the same way people don't get uncomfortable when they receive compliments sometimes uh-huh. I think sometimes people don't like the to think that there are people out there that probably look up to them right right it kind of feels like I don't deserve that or yeah. like why would anyone look up to me right but but yeah we probably all have some cousins or nieces and nephews or younger siblings yeah or, you know, friends in your ward or whatever, right. that you're like, if I really thought about it, they probably do look up to me a little bit. Right. Um, and, dude, I read, this is one of my favorite quotes. I'm going to say it wrong, but <laughs> um, this guy, I think it was um, Samuel Johnson. This is like an old, like, statesman. Uh-huh. Um, but he wrote in his journal one day, um, and then... Like, years later, his son wrote in his journal that same day. Uh-huh. And so they, com- they compared them, right? right? And they were like, his son was like seven or eight. Right, yeah. Right? And he just he just went fishing with his son. Yeah. And so I don't remember his son's name, but the, the dad's entry was like, went fishing with Kyle this morning, um, complete waste of an afternoon. You're right. Or something like that. Uh-huh. And Kyle wrote... Went fishing with dad, best day ever. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And, and, you know, maybe maybe Kyle was being annoying and yeah. was, was, like, crying or something. And, and so the dad's like, dude, what a horrible day. Like, yeah. It's raining. We didn't catch any fish. Right. But to the son, he's just like, yeah, I was just out there with my dad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I, love that, I love to think that, like, your worst day could be somebody's best day. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the times, it's those people who are younger than us, for whatever yeah, reason, yeah. they just look up to you. Mm-hmm. So just think, if you're, if you're having a hard time thinking of someone, think of someone like that. Yeah. You know, someone mm-hmm. who's younger who might look up to you. Yeah. I love that. We've been going for a while. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, like, anything you kind of want to, after, like, everything we've been talking about, any messages or something that you want to kind of go over and talk about more? Or maybe if you want to shout out your books? Or your podcast more? Um, No, you'll find me. You'll find my stuff if you want to. (laughs) Um, You'll tag me. People will find me if they want to. Uh, Um, Let's see. One last last little message. Um, One thing I've been thinking about a lot lately that is really hard, but I think I think it is really important. I think a lot of us you know, we strive to love people unconditionally, right? We strive to, to give people grace and to give people the opportunity to repent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to forgive people. But I think sometimes we do a horrible job of doing that with ourselves, right? with loving ourselves unconditionally, yeah. right? It's like it's one thing for me to love my mom unconditionally. Like, that's easy, right? you know? She birthed me. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. She's beautiful, she's endlessly patient, she's perfect. Right. Right? It's not the love. Yeah. She's easy to love unconditionally. There's nothing she can do. But for me, man, I don't give myself that same grace. Right. You know? Like you said, I do something a little foolish, I go put my dunce hat on and sit in the corner and cry. Yeah. You know? And I and I tell myself, you're such an idiot. Yeah. You know, even little things, I'll make a little, I'll forget to pay a ticket or something yeah, right. and I'm like dude you're such an idiot right, right whereas like if a close friend was like bro I freaking forgot to pay this ticket I'd be like oh bro you're fine let's get it let's you know yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. but when I'm talking to myself I'm like you're no idiot. trust me you're an idiot yeah you know yeah. and I'm trying to do better at that you know I don't have the worst self talk out there I know a lot of people struggle with it yeah. but there's lots of moments throughout the day where you can kind of beat yourself up a little bit and I wish we could give ourselves a little more grace and be like, you know what, I, I did mess up a bunch today, but I, I did my best, yeah. you know? Or like, yeah, this girl told me she doesn't love me, but 
I freaking loved her, yeah. and I did all I could, and I yeah. tried to make her love me, and it didn't work. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give myself some grace. Yeah, I'm gonna give myself a break. I like that. Yeah. I really like that. I, I um, a, 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 a thing that I really like about trying to help myself do more of that mm -hmm. is from this guy. His name is Charlie Rocket. Uh, maybe you've heard of him, but he was like a Nike athlete and um, a producer back in the day. But he was on a podcast that I really enjoyed where he talked about the um, power of like thinking of everything as like a winning streak. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it for me is kind of like a big like self-talk motivational thing for myself. I like to do a lot where in every single instance in life, I, I look for the good mm -hmm. and I look for the winning streaks. Yeah. So like I'm driving my car light turns green as I'm driving. I don't have to stop. Yeah. Winning streak. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely destroying this day. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And, and just like looking for those moments mm -hmm. more often. Yeah. The silver linings. Yeah. yeah, like you can find you can find them more often and by calling them out, out loud as mm -hmm. they come and happen. It, it does help a lot. Yeah, and that's gratitude. It's gratitude. Yeah, yeah. it really is just gratitude, which I love. Yeah. Taylor, I appreciate you. Of course, my guy. Honestly, thank you so much. Yeah, dude, this was fun. Man. Do you feel oblivious still? I, <laughs> bro, I don't know about anything. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I'm floating into oblivion. Uh, Thank you for tuning in to We're Oblivious. We hope you found this episode as enlightening and entertaining as we did. If you enjoyed what you heard, please consider subscribing, rating, and leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback and support helps us to get our episodes to more people like you. Don't forget to visit our website at we'reoblivious.com. That's all one word. We'reoblivious.com to access show notes, additional resources, and join our community. You can also follow us on social media, or I guess you can follow me on social media or on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Ruben Bradshaw. That's R-E-U-B-E-N-B-R-A-D-S-H-A-W-W. -W. That's two W's. To stay updated on upcoming episodes and more behind the scenes content. We love hearing from our listeners. So if you have any questions, topic suggestions, or people you think we should have on, or just want to say hello, please drop us a message at Ruben at oblivious.com. Your input drives the direction of our show. As we wrap up today, remember your support keeps us going and we can't wait to share more insightful and inspiring content and dialogue with you next time. Until then, thanks for being part of the We're Oblivious community. See you in the next episode.